What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna discuss Supergirl season three episode titled Fort Roz, so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Supergirl this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. I wanna start off saying I enjoyed this week's episode a lot more than last week. I was more engaged and the pacing was a bit better outside of the Alex and Ruby moments. I also enjoyed Livewire a lot this week, more so than usual. You guys know if you've been watching my videos for a while, she's not my favorite character, but this week she felt more like a real character. We got a lot more from her than we previously have and I really enjoyed that. Big steps for her because again, typically I just don't like this character. So the premise this week is they need info from a prisoner on Fort Roz and there's a lot of complications with this mission. We'll get into those complications in just a moment. The prisoner they're looking for is the person the fort is named after, Jinda Kal Raz. I hope I pronounced that right. Shout out to Sarah Douglas who portrayed Jen Dahl in this episode. She was also Ursa in the 1980s film Superman 2. Nice to see her back even if it was short lived because she got taken out pretty quickly. So Fort Roz itself was not in the Earth's gravity. Thank goodness I was worried they were going to just go the easy route and do that. They didn't, and I thank the writers for doing something unexpected, in my opinion. However, they did put it in a very complicated location, as I said a moment ago. Fort Roz is near a blue star. Now, in the comics, blue stars actually enhance Kryptonians. If I remember correctly, okay, I'm just going on memory here, uh, because they burn hotter and have the most energy, so they sort of like supercharge people from Krypton and even Daxum, if I remember correctly. It might not be Daxum, but I'm pretty sure Krypton. However, on the show, the blue stars have the opposite effect. For some reason, they take away a Kryptonian's powers, rendering them, rendering them, you know, pretty much exactly the same as under a red sun, which is really strange that two different types of light would have the same exact effect. Also, in other news, blue stars kill males. And this was probably like the most strange thing to come out of the mission. I was curious how they would come up with the plot of leaving the men out of the team. At least this was creative. It's wacky, silly, probably one of, you know, a one-off thing. We will never see this again. We're not going to visit a blue star anytime soon. Also, though, wouldn't aliens have different genetic makeup than humans? So, I mean, would this affect all males of every species or just human males? You know what? It, it doesn't matter. It was a plot device. I'm overthinking it. Anyway, that was like one of the weird things. So let's talk about some of the stuff that did not work for me in this episode. The Ruby and Alex stuff. It felt like it dragged the episode down a bit for me. The pacing suffered because of it. However, I think it was just more foundation between Alex and Ruby. So when she does eventually adopt Ruby, it won't feel like it came out of nowhere. I can respect that decision. I know it's still not, you know, concrete whether or not... Alex is going to adopt Ruby, but I mean, this feels like that's definitely what they're setting up here. Also, when Alex went to basically bully that little girl who was bullying Ruby, I'm sure she was breaking like a billion laws. It was funny though, and I laughed, you know, but it was just a strange scene. At least it's within the personality of Alex to do something like this. And for that reason, I'm willing to go along with it. But it just felt a little odd for her to talk to the child and not speak to the parents. Um, that was just, I don't know, something strange about that for me. Also, oddly enough, we got some Sandra stuff this week. It's like the writers love toying with the fandom, the people that love that relationship. Unless Floriana gets a ton of free time, I think the idea of Maggie coming back is just a pipe dream. Bringing her back as a guest would just be more salt in the wound for the fans, unless they're going to actually commit to this relationship. Um, and I don't think they are. I don't think that's in the cards right now. Uh, maybe next season or the season after that, but this season, definitely not. Let me know what you guys thought about that uh, in the comments below. Also, some of the action scenes in this episode didn't work too well for me. Outside of the battle between Livewire and Rain, which was dope, I loved that fight scene, the rest of the episode felt a bit off. One part that stood out as particularly bad or even funny was when Livewire jumped in front of Rain's heat vision to save Supergirl. It was very poor editing. It was actually kind of a funny shot and it wasn't supposed to be. Also, I don't think Livewire is the kind of person to sacrifice herself for Supergirl. Yes, sure. You know, she didn't want to actually kill Supergirl herself. They gave her the opportunity and she didn't do it. But I don't think, you know, just after spending a day with her, that she would do that, that she would jump in front of that heat vision. It's just not something her character would be doing, in my opinion. But I did like that she got a cool send off, uh, basically being a hero. So, you know, somewhat of a, re a rushed redemption arc for her. 
Um, but, you know, she's been a character that's been around for a while, so I guess they felt like they needed to wrap up her storyline. And this may not be the end of her, because we know that she can turn into electricity or pure energy. So this may not be the end of Livewire. Now let's talk about some of the stuff I really enjoyed. Brainiac and Wynn. What a fun exchange with those guys. It was rather pleasing to sit and watch them work together to see who could outsmart the other one. You have Brainiac, who's clearly one of the smartest people from the future, and Wynn, the IT guy who got promoted to DEO computer expert, tech support, tech creator. Yes, he's smart. I give him that. Anyway, I need more scenes with these guys in my life. It was great, even if I still don't like the way Brainy looks. Although there are some hints that we might see a change in his look very soon. I really loved these moments with them back at the DEO. It was a great pairing. They play off each other really well. Um, it was just like, it was, it was comedic moments that made sense to me. And I really love it when the shows go this direction. So hats off to the writers for doing this. And if they did come up with any of the dialogue themselves, which it felt almost like they were quipping with each other, um, which may or may not have been how it worked out. Maybe they're just great actors and they were able to pull it off, but it just felt very natural. And I love that. I also really enjoyed the all girl team up, Emra, Psy, Livewire, and Supergirl all working together reluctantly. It reminded me a lot of season one of Legends when you had so many clashes and personalities, a lot of butting heads. It really reminded me of that. And I'm still not sure if Emra's powers are just drastically underdeveloped or if she doesn't have much control over them, you know, as much as we assume she has. I mean, she uses it very sparingly. And since there isn't a lot of visual effects or visual special effects involved in terms of how it looks, I'm surprised they don't use it more often. It seems like it's a, it's a very weird thing where she's got this really great power, this telekinesis, but she doesn't use it very much. And Rain showing up on Fort Roz was cool. We find out that her power isn't directly tied to yellow sunlight. That's interesting and totally OP. However, I want to point out, I didn't like how she got there or how she was able to find out where Fort Roz was. It was all very rushed. And, you know, her having a Kryptonian ship just laying around was a bit strange, Unless it was her old ship, but they didn't make that very clear. So the idea of being able to track where Fort Roz was uh, using her hologram person and able to, you know, get a ship so easily, that bugged me a little bit. We find out as well, it seems that Rain is a bit more of a split personality than I had first anticipated or we had first anticipated. You know, she's fighting against Samantha in her mind for control, and it's evident when Sai attacks her that Samantha isn't giving up easily and i kind of want them to explore that a bit more and i think we are going to get more of that this season and in a very cool twist we see that when rain returns to earth that samantha is missing time so if samantha pursues this then you know is she going to find out on her own that she's rain or will the deo pursue it and figure it out first and if they do figure it out are they going to try and lock her up and throw away the key i mean this is someone with the power of supergirl without the same limitations so i think it would be kind of difficult to just lock her up. So we're gonna have to see how that plays out. And we get our first glimpse of the world killer Purity, I believe that's who it's gonna be. Julia is her name. At the end of this episode, as Supergirl finds out on Fort Roz, there are more out there and they need to be on the alert, basically. I'm still not sure how this information will help her or how Thomas Coville spoke with Jenda Roz, you know, cause he said that he spoke, I think he said he spoke to a priestess. So I'm gonna assume that's who he was talking about. I hope they reveal this later on because none of that really makes sense. Uh, Jinda Raz is on Fort Roz or was on Fort Roz floating in space. When did Thomas speak to her? Was it when the fort was on Earth? Was it like a telepathic link? Still not very clear. But I am very curious to uh, Purity's additional powers because in the comics, the world killers have different types of powers. Uh, I hope she's just not a Kryptonian clone character with the same powers as, you know, Supergirl and Rain. But we're going to have to wait and see. And one last thing that kind of bugged me, it didn't show how our team got back to Earth. There was a lot of ticking clock moments. And yeah, you know, they showed the DEO communicating with them, trying to help them. But the trip back happened during a commercial break. Um, and that's the space geek in me wanting to see more of that ship and more of that environment. Um, but I was kind of just bummed out. I was like, oh, they, they made it back during the break. Um, yeah, tension completely gone. Also, what did you guys think about that caramel moment at the end? Did it feel genuine to you guys? You know, is this the return of that power couple or was mon -El just being extra nice to someone he cares about as a friend? Because I felt like, okay, there's romance here. Wait, no, there's, there's no romance. Wait, there's romance. No, there's no romance. So it's again, that on and off thing between the two of them. It's, it feels like a rewind, you know what I mean? Like to last season before they got together. 
So it's very strange. Anyway, um, let me know what you guys think. Are they going to get back together? Or is this the writers just pandering to everybody who is all about this relationship? Overall, I enjoyed this episode a lot more than last week, and even with some minor annoyances, I'm going to give this week's episode an 8 out of 10. It's a very strong episode outside of, you know, a few problems we talked about earlier. Hopefully this is a move back into the direction the show had before the break, which was the start of a stellar season 3 of Supergirl. I think the first half of the season had a lot more positive moments than negative moments in my mind, but now I want to know what you guys think. Uh, so let me know in the comments below, did you like this episode? What did you like the most? And um, if you agree with my score, don't forget to click on the poll and vote that just popped up a moment ago. Also, give me a, any of your own theories on the world killers and what you think we can expect from these ladies as they show up. Are they all going to be knockoff Kryptonians? Are they going to have different powers from Rain and Supergirl? Because I think that would be much cooler if they did that. Um, and also let me know if you had any problems with this episode because I had a few minor issues, but it didn't take away from my overall enjoyment of this week's Supergirl. Um, and do you think that Team Supergirl can stop these world killers? That's a big question. Um, anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Take care. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I will catch you guys later. Hey guys, Eric here. Hope you enjoyed my video. If you want to become part of the Ericverse, make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment on this video. All of my information is down in the info box, all my social links, my Patreon, all of that good stuff. Join the community, become part of this little world here on YouTube, and go ahead and check out some of my videos over here. I got some great content if you want to keep exploring my channel. Thanks again. Take care.